Welcome back to another video. In this one, we are going to synthesize for you all of the information from the top brain retraining experts out there. People like Dr. Norman Deutsch, Dr. Stephen Porges, Bessel van der Kolk, and many others who talk about different ways that we can employ neuroplasticity to change the brain. And we're gonna distill it down to you for really, to really four things that you can do. And for the first one, I'm gonna turn it over to you, Katie. Yeah, so the first step to changing your brain, um, and arguably, in my opinion, the most important step, is just bringing awareness to the fact that you want to make a change, uh, and bringing awareness to any th thoughts or patterns that you are engaging in that just that aren't serving you, right? Uh, I think a very important thing, though, to remember is as you become more aware of the patterns that just aren't uh, helping you become the person that you want to be is to do so with a lot of compassion, right? Because oftentimes we start to, to understand the patterns that we have or see the patterns that we have and we can kind of feel uncomfortable about that, maybe judgmental of ourselves for that. But we always want to bring it back and remember that neurons that fire together wire together. So these patterns that you have, you have them because you've been participating or partaking in them for years and that's not your fault. Um, so bring that awareness, that loving, compassionate awareness to your patterns and your behaviors is your first step to changing your brain. Excellent. And I'm going to pick it up right where you left off with neurons that fire together, wire together. And the flip side of that, which is coined by Donald Hebb, is that neurons that fire apart also wire apart. And this means that basically once we've developed an awareness, we kind of have an awareness of how we are, what's going on in our, in our system, any patterns that we might be, be running. And by the way, a pattern can be something as simple as uh, creating tension. Mm -hmm. You know, if I encounter something, it can even be encounter a feeling of discomfort or a thought in my own mind or, or something in my body that feels unsafe or just uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. My response to that, my pattern might be to tense up against it, mm -hmm. right? And so the first step is awareness. The second step is interrupting the patterns. Awareness gives us the lens to recognize what patterns we're running. The interruption gives us the ability to interrupt them and ultimately replace them. And this is where there's a very great line that we use in the program that was coined by Dr. Viktor Frankl, famed neurologist, who said that really that choice point lives in that space between stimulus and response, right? So there is this space, and you can think of it as sort of like the gap between neurons. And if we through awareness, we practice interrupting these patterns. We notice, oh, you know, the last time, every time I thought about that thing or I encountered that challenge, I tensed up a little bit, I created stress in my system, unknowingly, of course, as you mentioned, Katie, we have to always look at ourselves with the utmost compassion, knowing that the brain and body really learn these, these responses in an effort to protect us with the best of intentions. But knowing that, we now have the ability to change them. And so interruption and then replacing them with a different response, in this case would be like a relaxation response, is the second key to neuroplasticity. Love it. Uh, and then of course, the third key is going to be repetition. Doing this over and over and over again. So every time you are met with that sensation um, or that experience that causes you to tense or causes you potentially to make a story up in your mind about yourself. Every time you do that, we want to uh, choose that new pattern and we wanna do it over and over again. Now, here's a little pro tip that's gonna help with this, is practice this when you're not in the middle of that uncomfortable sensation or that uncomfortable experience. So what you're gonna wanna do is I'm just going to use a really basic, like a really basic example of, let's say your whole life you've been afraid of dogs, right? And so every time you see a dog across the street, you tense up right away, just like that. So yes, when you're out and about and you're walking and you see a dog, you're going to want to uh, let yourself really relax. But also what you can do when you're at home, not even in the presence of a dog, you might visualize a dog, right? You might watch a TV show that has a dog in it 
And all the while you are practicing that relaxation response to build that new association. And you're just doing that over and over and over again. Lots of repetition to change your brain. Yeah. And this brings us right to the last one, which is sort of the next step of repetition is consistency. Mm -hmm. Now, consistency differs from repetition in one way in that when you think of repetition, it's really just getting more reps in, doing it over and over and over again. Whereas consistency really goes into over time. We want to do this consistently over a longer period of time. It doesn't mean that we have to be perfect at it. It doesn't mean that we can't miss a day or anything. Um, it simply means that more often than not, we start to turn our attention again back to those first steps. Just to recap here, there is awareness, interruption, repetition, and now we practice it over the long haul. And when we do that, it starts to actually change the default state of the brain, change our patterns and change the way our brain functions all on its own. Pretty incredible, <laughs> absolutely incredible. Um, so we're curious, you guys, what step are you on here in changing your brain? Are you in the awareness step? Are you already aware and you're interrupting the patterns? Have you been doing this you know, over and over again? Or are you like, I'm a pro and I've been doing this stuff consistently? So please feel free, uh, leave a comment below. We'd love to hear where you're at and also, you know, bring any questions that you have uh, for us. And I will say also, you know, for anyone who's wondering, okay, well, this is all well and good, but how do we do these things? How do we do the interruption? And what do we replace it with? We have an entire brain retraining program on this at reorigin.com. This is what we do. This is what we love. We're endlessly fascinated by the capabilities of the human brain. And we invite you to check out our program in the link below.